This is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to crochet the stitch pattern for the striped hourglass area rug. This is a beautiful area rug, as you can see here, made with Peyton's Inspired. I used lots of the colors to make this rug, but you can make it in just one color, two, or as many colors as you'd like. The finished rug, as written, is about 22 and a half inches wide by 38 inches long before you add a small single crochet border. Custom sizing information is included in the written pattern. Please go to the link in the description where you'll find a link to the written pattern as well as all the supplies you need. The supplies for this pattern include, of course, Peyton's Inspired in your choice of colors, a USL 8mm crochet hook, and you will need stitch markers for this. We're going to be working with two active loops, so you'll want stitch markers to hold those open. First, let's take a look at the yarn required. I wanted to talk about yarn amounts because I know that's something I'm going to get questions on. For this pattern in this size, I used three balls of the charcoal heather, which is my main color. This is the third ball. You can see I only needed a few yards of this one to complete the rug. The other colors, the accent stripe colors throughout the rug, I again used less than one ball. You can see here approximately 50 grams per ball. So if you want to make it in just two colors, you know you'll need 820 yards and you should be able to split those uh, among however many colors basically you'd like to use. Just knowing the bulk of those is going to be in the main color. And let's take another quick look at the finished rug here. It is made end to end in stripes, working with just two colors at a time. You've got this great cable pattern on the top and underneath, as you can see, it's much flatter. So you can add whatever non-skid backing you'd like to your rug. We're going to change colors then just for every, you know, opposing contrast color stripe as we go throughout. So each of these stripes will just have their own two ends to weave in. It does take a little bit of finagling of the stitch pattern to make it work like this, but I'm really proud of how it came out and I'm excited to show you how to work this stitch pattern. Now for our sample today, I'm going to be using the green as my main color or color A because it's a little bit easier to see on camera. In the finished rug, this is that dark gray color. So to begin this pattern, you would start with a chain of 63. Or if you'd like to make a custom size, you can start with a chain of six plus two plus one for the turning chain. So I'm just going to be making a smaller swatch here today. So first I need a multiple of six, so I will chain 12. Let me see here, since I've been chatting, how many I've already chained. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we just need two more. So there's our 12, so that's our multiple of six, plus two, so we go two, and then plus one for the turning chain, like so. Now we're ready to begin. We're going to skip the chain closest to our hook right there, and then we are going to single crochet in each remaining chain across. So row one is quite simple right up until we get to the end. So go ahead and make your 62 single crochets or however many you'd like to make, and I'll see you at the end of row one. Okay, so here I am at the end of row one for my swatch. You should have 62 stitches or a multiple of six plus two. But to finish off this row, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to go ahead and pull up our loop and remove the hook. And this is where we really want to have those stitch markers. We're going to put a stitch marker in that loop. I always like to catch the end too, it's just a habit. It seems to help hold it together. And then we are going to go ahead and put this down as so. Remember, you can see here, I have not turned my work. And now I'm going to pull in my contrast color or color B, or whichever color you're on. So without turning, I'm going to join to the first stitch. So not this one, but the very first stitch I actually did make in row one with a single crochet. So there's a couple different ways to do this. Um, you can join with a slip stitch and chain one, or you can use a standing single crochet, whatever you like to do. I'm going to go ahead and just put a loop like that on my hook. Come over here, find that first stitch. Hook doesn't want to go in. There we go. Get that stitch or the hook in there in that first stitch. Yarn over and pull up my loop and then yarn over and pull through those two for my first single crochet. So you can join and make that first single crochet in whatever style works for you. I am going to go ahead and put a stitch marker in it though. Then we just single crochet in each remaining stitch across. So just as before, single crochet in each stitch and I'll see you when we get to the end of row two. Okay, so I've got one more stitch left to make here in row two, and I just wanted to give you this little tip. If you hold on to that active loop of the other color, to sort of stabilize that stitch, it's a little bit easier to get into that one and make that final stitch there. So then after we've made all our stitches in row two, 
we're going to pull up that loop and pull out our hook again and put a stitch marker in that one. And now we're going to return to our original color, color A. So it's always important when you're working with multiple colors, go ahead and take your time and make sure you aren't getting to any twists in your yarn. I like to keep the two skeins sort of separated a little bit. That tends to help quite a bit, but you'll just want to make sure you're all straightened out before you start adding any accidental knots. So I'll go ahead and pull that stitch marker out for our first color. Get my hook back in that loop there. There we go. And then we're going to chain two, like so. Then we turn our entire project over and start crocheting row three. So for row three, what I like to do is I like to hold the contrast color. So colors B through, I think it's um, G of the color or how many, however many colors you're using that aren't your main color or your first color. I like to hold those loops in back when I start crocheting that next uh, that next row. So I'm going to start by single crocheting in the first three stitches. Get that little tail out of the way there. So we've got one, two, and three. There we are. And then we're going to work behind the previous row. So behind our orange row here and work back post double crochets around the next two stitches, two rows below. So that means we yarn over and we find the post of the next stitch. So we can kind of use these as a guide here. We've got one, two, three. So this would be our fourth one. So then we are come, come behind our work and drop down all the way to that next single crochet there. You can see here, I've come from behind like for a back post, double crochet, yarn over and pull up our loop, yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. And then we need to do that on the next stitch. So we yarn over, come all the way from behind there. You can see I'm coming from the back, around the post of that stitch, pull up our loop, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. There we are. Pull up a little bit more of that green yarn here to work with. And then we begin the section in the written pattern that begins with the asterisks. We're going to single crochet in the next four stitches. Now that doesn't mean we come back and single crochet in these. Because we've already worked down around here and we've made these two more stitches, we're going to basically skip over these. We don't want to add any stitches. We want to have the same number of stitches in every row. So we skip, since we've worked two post stitches, we're going to skip over those two stitches right there. And then we single crochet in the next four. One, two, three, and four. And I just want to go back and double check and make sure, yes, I did just skip two. Okay, so then we're going to back post double crochet around the next two stitches, two rows below. So we yarn over and you can again use kind of, see where you put those, you can sort of count out one, two, three, four, find that next one and go around it from behind for a back post stitch just as before. There we are, oop, that one got a little tangled. Let's pull it out and do it again. We yarn over, find the stitch we want to go around there, one, two, three, four, there it is. Come from behind around that stitch and you can really flip your work over like this if you need to, if it helps, often helps me. Pull up that loop, yarn over and pull through two and finish off the stitch. Then we do it around the next one, which is now a little easier to find. It's just that very next stitch. And we work our back post double crochet right there. And then that's our repeat, single crochet in the next four, back post double crochet around the next two, two rows below. And we keep doing that until just three stitches remain, which is what we've got right here. We've got, if I pull up my loop, getting a little confused with the stitches there, it goes one, two, three stitches remain. So to finish off our third row, we're just going to single crochet in those last three stitches. So let's find those again there. We've got one, two, and three. And that is it for row three. This is obviously on the wrong side of our rug or the back of the rug. All our cables are going to be on the top of our rug. So after you finish row three, it's time to pull up that loop and put another stitch marker in it. But we're not going to turn yet. So this sounds a little counterintuitive. We're not going to turn our work. We're going to be working our orange the same direction, but it's a little easier if you turn it back just to get your hook back in that loop. So I'll go ahead and take that stitch marker out, get my hook back in that loop, and now I'll turn it again so we're going this right direction. So to begin row four, we're going to start again with a chain two, one, two, 
and we're going to be working again in that same direction from the back of the rug. This time though, we're simply going to single crochet in each stitch across. So just as before, just single crochet in each stitch till you get to the end. All of our contrast rows are gonna be like this. They're just going to be um, single crochet rows worked all the way across. But I do wanna point out that as you're working these single crochets, you're working only into those stitches of the previous row. You don't want to drop down and work into the tops of any of those stitches that you essentially skipped when you made the post stitches. Just work evenly across right along the previous row of stitches until you get to the end. Okay, so at the end of row four, you can see we've still worked across the back of our rug, and now we're ready to pull up our loop and put our stitch marker in. I'll get a big stitch marker for that one there. All right, and then we're going to turn our work, but first I'll go ahead and get my hook in the loop of our green. We're going back to our color A. We're just going to switch back and forth to the end of the pattern. So I'll go ahead and start with a chain two, and then I will turn, and now we're going to be working across the front of the rug. But managing your side loops here, I again like to push that loop now to the back. Our contrast color, I just try and keep that loop on the back anytime I start a new rug. The back, or excuse me, when I start a new row, I try and keep it on the back of the rug. So if you need to, you can use a stitch marker to indicate the front, or just like I say, always know that those post stitches are going to be on the front or the top of the rug. So to begin row five, we are going to, after we've chained two and turned, we single crochet in the first stitch. There we are. I'm gonna go ahead and put a stitch marker in there. There's so much going on with this pattern. These can be really helpful. Then working in front of the previous row, as I pull up some more yarn here, we're going to front post double crochet around the first post of the stitch two rows below. So this is going to start making that great hourglass shape that we see in those cables. So we yarn over, and then we are going to find that very first post stitch we made two rows below. So that's in the same color. We go right on around there, just like for a front post double crochet. So we yarn over, go around the stitch that way, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. So that finishes that stitch. Then we single crochet in the next four stitches. So again, we want to make sure that we skip over that stitch right there and start in the next one. So we've got one, two, three, and four. Then we start the portion of the pattern that begins with the asterisk, again, if you're following along with the written pattern, and we front post double crochet around the next two post stitches, two rows below, and then single crochet in the next four stitches, and that's our repeat. But this time, like I say, we're going to have two front post double crochets. And as you can see here, that means working back into a previous one and then all the way over here into the next one. So let's yarn over. We find that second one right there. We go right around that for a front post double crochet. Actually, basically just slide your hook right behind the post. Pull up your loop, yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. And you do want to keep these double crochet, these front post double crochet stitches a little bit loose. Don't try and make them too tight or they're going to pull really tightly on your cable pattern. If you need to, if you find them seeming to be a little too tight, you can really give them sort of a lift. Lift up those loops as you crochet them. There we go. And that will help keep that row nice and even. So there's the first one. Now we're going to yarn over again. And jump all the way over here to this next post stitch for our second one. And again, you just want to kind of pull those loops up. Make sure they're nice and, nice and high. And then we single crochet in the next four. So easy peasy, we just skip over those two and go to the next one. So there's one, two, gonna need a little bit more, more of my green here, three and four. And so that's the repeat. You can see now we're set up for another two front post stitches, but we'd have to come over here and then all the way to the next one if we were making the full sized rug. So when you get to the point when there's just two stitches left, we're going to front post double crochet around that very last post stitch that's left hanging out there at the end. They should all be connected to another one in this row. There we are. And then simply single crochet in the very last stitch. We always skip the stitch behind the post stitch. There we are. And that's what it should look like on a smaller scale after you have finished row five. At the end of row five, we're not going to turn. We're going to be picking up our orange. You can see it ends right here, ready to go and working across that same direction again. So we pull up our loop, get our stitch marker right in there, and I'm going to go ahead and move this stitch marker out of the way because it's done now. 
And I think I'll go ahead and put this one in the last stitch of the row just to help me out again. So again, if you need to, you can sort of flip your work back over if it's easier for you to get your hook back in that loop. All right, there we are. And then we can chain two. We're gonna start all these rows, I think from here on out with a chain two until we get to the border. And then we turn back, so we're working the same direction again. And then for row six, simply single crochet in each stitch across. Like I said, for your contrast colors, it's pretty simple. It'll change whether or not you're working on the front or the back of the rug, but really it's just chain two and single crochet in each stitch across. And then after that, we'll be ready to turn again. All right, and this is what your rug should look like after row six. So for row seven, we're going to be going back to our first color. Let me get the stitch marker out of that one and reinsert our hook, and then we turn. So a good rule of thumb is we only turn after our contrast color rows are made. Then again, I wanna make sure that contrast color loop is held in the back as I begin this side. So to begin row seven, we're going to start again with our chain two, and then single crochet in that first stitch right there. See, that was the marked one there at the end of the previous row. So I'll go ahead and move that stitch marker on up. There we go. And then working behind the previous row, we're going to back post double crochet around the first post two rows below. So we've kind of already done this, but now it's going to be even easier because we're working around other post stitches. So we don't have to find which stitch exactly to go around. The post stitches are going to be right there. So we'll yarn over and we'll come to the back of our work because we're working behind the previous row. And I'm trying to get my hands arranged here so I can do this on camera at the same time and, and show you at the same time. We're going to be going right around that first post stitch. So I turn it over here. Just want to make it really clear. Here's that when we're going this direction, this will be the first post stitch we come to right here. So that's the one we want to go around. So we yarn over and pull our loop, or our hook rather, right around that post, basically from behind. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. So there you can see now that post stitch is still on the correct side of our fabric. Then we are going to, just wanna nipple check my instructions here, single crochet in the next four stitches. So of course we skip that one right there because we've got the post stitch sort of in that space. We go one, whoop, hook fell right on out there. There we go, one, two, three, four. And then we are going to begin the part with the asterisk. Back post double crochet around the next two post stitches, two rows below, single crochet in the next four. So basically what we were doing last time we worked a green row, but from the other side. So now, and this time we don't have to stretch for them. They're gonna be right there underneath. So if I flip this over again, you can see, hopefully here where we're at, that next post stitch is right under there. So it's really easy to find. So we can just come straight down for this one. Grab that next post stitch there with your hook. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through two and yarn over and pull through two. Then we do it around the next one, which is right there. So we yarn over and go around. There we are. It's a little harder to show here on camera there. Go right around that post stitch. Kind of looks when you flip it over like this, it looks almost like we're doing a front post double crochet, but because we're doing it actually on the back of our work, it's a back post double crochet. So it, if you're flipping it around, see, and it fell right off my hook there with all the flipping, but if you're flipping it around like this, it does look a little confusing, but we're still coming from behind that post stitch. But basically get around it and go ahead and make your double crochet. Then we single crochet, of course, in those next four stitches. So we wanna make sure to skip those two because now we've, we've worked two post stitches and single crochet in the next four. So I'll need some more yarn here. You do go through a fair bit of the main color of yarn. Like I say, I did need to use three skeins of it to finish it off. So we've got our four single crochets there. And then that's our repeat. Post, back post, double crochet around the two post stitches below, single crochet in the next four. Now on our little swatch here, if we turn it over, we can see what those post stitches are doing to our pattern. And now we've got just one more left right there and just two stitches left in our row here. You can see two more of those orange stitches. So to finish off row seven, we're going to back post double crochet around that very last post stitch. Let's see, there it is. 
So like I say, even though it looks like a front post stitch from this side, it just makes it a little bit easier to find. So we can pull it up there, work that double crochet off. And then of course that stitch counts for that one. So then we just single crochet in the very last stitch of the row. Then we can pull up our loop and insert our stitch marker. So this is what it looks like now from the back of the rug after row seven. Row eight, of course, is another one of the contrast color rows. So we're simply going to chain two and then single crochet across. So like I say, I turn my work here a little bit, it's sometimes easier to get my hook in there, but I wanna make sure to work back across in that same direction. So find that first stitch, always handy to have it stitch markered, and then single crochet across for row eight. All right, and here we are at the end of row eight. And again, we're on the back of the rug. And I just wanted to point out, because of the stitch pattern, it is a lot easier to count your rows from the back than from the front. From the front with cables, it always is a little tricky to count rows, but if you come to the back, you can simply count the color changes since each color is in a new, or excuse me, each row is in a new color. It's a little easier to see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now we're ready for row nine and we're time. it's time to go back to that first color. So I'll get my hook there in our green. And then of course, this is where we actually do turn. Looks like we've got another stitch marker hanging out there that I'm done with. So I'll pull that one out of the way. And so we'll chain two and turn for row nine. Again, I want to make sure that contrast color loop is sort of in the back of our work. What this does is it just gives us a really consistent and nice edge. I did include border instructions, but if you continue to use this technique, you may find it optional. I thought the sides were actually really beautiful um, worked up this way the way they were. So continuing with row nine after we've chained two, we single crochet, of course, in that first stitch. And get that in there. Go ahead and put our stitch marker in there. And then working in front of the previous row, we're going to front post double crochet around the first post stitch two rows below. So right now for this row, we're just sort of continuing that line straight up or those lines of the cables, I should say. So we just come right down to that first post stitch there and work a front post double crochet. Then we'll single crochet in the next four stitches. So make sure we skip that one there. Go one, two, three, four, and now we're ready for our repeat. Front post double, front post double crochet around the next two stitches, single crochet in the next four. So we just come straight down to that next one, work one front post double crochet, go straight to the next one. Make sure you miss or skip those two stitches right there and single crochet in the next four. One, two, three, and four. And so once again, that's our repeat. Front post double crochet two, single crochet four. When we get to the end, again, we'll have two stitches left but we need to work into that last front post double crochet with another front post double crochet, and then finish off by single crocheting in that very last stitch. So I'll move that stitch marker up to the stitch, and then I will keep our loop open here and secure with this stitch marker. So for those who aren't familiar with stitch markers, basically the reason I'm using this in this loop is because if we didn't, you can see it will keep the loop from pulling out and coming undone, and I can use it to open it back up. If we didn't, and if we tugged on that, it would actually start undoing the stitches in the previous row. So those stitch markers are really important. So after row nine, of course, it's time for row 10. I'm gonna just get my loop here of the orange back on my hook, chain two, and then again, as for all our contrast rows, just single crochet in each stitch across. So this is what your swatch or rug should look like after row 10. You can see we've created those great hourglass shapes, or at least begun them, but now it's time to pull them back in. So as we move to row 11 with our first color here, we'll be again working from the wrong side. So I'll get my hook in that loop and chain two and turn. Make sure that contrast color loop there is held on the back of the rug, which will be the smooth side, the side without cables. And we're going to work a single crochet in the first three stitches. So we start right in that marked one, get the marker out of the way there. And there's one, and I'll put that stitch marker right back in. 
Get out of there, tail. There we go. And then two and three. And now working behind the previous row, we're going to back post double crochet around the first two post stitches, two rows below. So previously in these post stitches rows, we start out with one and then got into the multiple before we work with two. Right away here, we're going to be working with two. What we're going to be doing, and I kind of talked about it a little bit there, we're going to be drawing it back together. So we'll get sort of that hourglass uh, shape basically in our cabling. So what we're going to do is yarn over and find that very first one right there, two rows below. So that'll be the one closest to the edge. So we go around that one. And again, however you need to manipulate your fabric so it's easiest for you to go around that post as for a back post stitch. However you need to hold your yarn and hook and swatch and rug, it's all good. As long as you can work that post stitch or that double crochet right around there, then you're all set. Then we're going to be coming all the way over here for the next one. So it helps sometimes I find if I kind of use another finger to hold that loop on my hook a little bit while I'm searching out that next stitch to go around. So it'll be the first of a pair on the other side there. Go ahead and work that double crochet off like so. And then of course we skip those two stitches right there because we've made two post stitches and single crochet in the next four. So there's one, two, three, and four. There we are. So that's going to be our repeat then of cross, single crochet in the next four, back post double crochet around the next two post stitches, two rows below. So actually I suppose to finish our repeat, we would need to do the next two, but I wanna take a moment and show what those did. Sort of straighten that out there. So you can see now we're pulling back together here and opening up for that new hourglass basically to be right here. So what we need to do is find the second one of that pair. We'll turn it back over here. That's the last one I weren't, went around. So that's going to be the next one. So I'll find that stitch. You can go ahead and even use your fingers to pull it up if it's easier for you to get your hook right in there and make your double crochet. Don't be afraid to manhandle your yarn. It's just yarn. Then we yarn over and find the next one. So if we turn that over again, that's going to be the one all the way over here. So now you can see how that shape's really coming together. So we find that next one, get under there with our hook, make our double crochet. And that is essentially actually our repeat for this row. Four single crochet, two back post double crochets. Then we get to the point where there's just three stitches remaining and on our little swatch, we're already there. So we're going to finish it off by a uh, single crocheting in the last three stitches. Because if you flip it over here, you can see we've worked around all those post stitches already. So to finish it off, make sure we skip those two and just single crochet in the very last three. So there's one, two, and three. So then I will pull up that loop and secure it. Move that stitch marker up to this last stitch. And then I need to come back here and get our contrast color. Again, although we're not actually turning, we're working in that same direction. I just like to flip it over. It's a little easier for me to get it on my hook here. There we are. Chain two. Now flip it back the correct way so we can work across the back of our, back of our rug again. And again, of course, just single crochet in each stitch across. I do want to point out too on the written pattern, uh, if you're following along the written pattern, which I strongly suggest you do for this pattern, you'll want to, you'll notice rather that after each row number, it'll say RS or WS. These are standard crochet abbreviations for right side and wrong side. So the right side of the rug, of course, is the side with all the beautiful cables and the wrong side will be the bottom that touches the floor. So that will help you keep track and you'll always be able to know, you can count your rows with all the color changes and then you can see wrong side or right side to make sure you're on track and making the correct row for the pattern. Okay, so this is what it should look like after row 12. We have finished this row on the wrong side of our rug and you can see here is what it looks like from the right side. So now we're ready to start row 13, which is going to be back on the right side of the rug. But first we need to get our hook into our first color of yarn. There we are. So we'll chain two and turn and pull that contrast color loop to the back of our work again. So then to continue with row 13, we're going to single crochet in the first three stitches. 
Let's see. And sometimes I find, you know, when you're making these single crochets into a stitch that still has an active loop, it really does kind of want to be floppy. But if I pull that yarn right over the top of the stitch as I yarn over and pull it up, that seems to help it keep it lined up really nicely and keeps it from sort of getting off track with the other loop there. There we go. So there's our first one. And then we need two more single crochets. One and two. And then working in front of the previous row, since now we're on the right side of our fabric, we're going to front post double crochet around the first two post stitches, two rows below. So we just find that very first one, make one stitch, find the next one, make our next front post double crochet. Then we skip over those two right there, of course, and single crochet in the next four. So there's one, two, three, and four. Okay, then we front post double crochet around the next two. You can see they're right here below waiting for us. So we find the next one and make our front post double crochet and then front post double crochet around the next. And that is the repeat that will get us all the way across to about the end here as I pull up a little bit more of this green. There we are. So you can see it's single crochet four, two front post double crochets until you get all the way across here until there are just three stitches remaining. Because of course we've worked these two so they don't count. So there's just these three left. So to finish off, we single crochet in those last three stitches. So there's two and three. And again, we can secure that loop and move our stitch marker up. There we are. So that's the end of row 13. And then of course, we're just gonna come back here and grab our other color, our color B or C or D or whatever it is for you. And chain two and single crochet across the previous row in the same direction. So if we went this way with the main color, we're going to go this way with the next color, whether that's on the front or the back. So I'll just go ahead and move that stitch marker up and single crochet across and I'll see you at the end of row 14. So if you follow along with the written pattern, you will end on an odd numbered row, row 115. It's a little different because you don't have to remove the hook from the active loop at the end because we're going to continue with our border. So after row 114 or whenever you're done with that contrast color, you can go ahead and cut that yarn. And then you can just pull that loop through and finish it off however you like. And then weave in that end or however many ends for your contact, contrast stripes you have. So we're just going to go ahead and finish up with our main color for our border. Now in the written pattern, your last row, your row 115 is actually worked um, from the wrong side, just like this one, so that's handy. So then you are ready to continue with the border row. And of course, the big difference between row 115 and the other rows of that repeat is simply that you don't need to pull up your loop and remove your hook. We continue on for the border. Now, as I was mentioning earlier, if you manage your loops and hold that contrast color to the back, I think this actually has a really lovely look along the sides. I kind of like how they overlap almost like a selvage edge, but I know a lot of people prefer borders. So we're going to go ahead and add our border to ours as well. I think the border does also look very nice. So with our color A, we chain one and turn or turn and chain one so that we can work here from the right side of our rug. We always wanna make our edgings from the right side. And we're simply going to single crochet in each stitch of the previous row until we get to the corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a stitch marker in the first one there that I made so that I know when I come back around and just single crochet all the way across until you get to the end. If you wanted to, you could simply do this to cap off your rug and then cut the yarn at the end if you wanted to keep those sides the way they are, or then we'll continue down the side. So on my little swatch, I'm almost there. Of course, you should, again, if you're making the full sized rug, you should still have those 62 stitches. Our stitch count for this pattern is the same for every row. So that's why it's important that we skip the orange or the contrast uh, color stitches when we make those post stitches. We don't want to accidentally increase anything. So I'm just gonna get my stitch in that last one there at the corner. So then we chain two. And then the way I've worked down the side here is a little different. I worked a single crochet and then chain one evenly along the side of the rug. This is a technique that I really like to use when you've got funky sides like this, and it can be a little questionable um, how many stitches you wanna add for each row. Normally for a single crochet, you would just work one single crochet in the side of each row, 
but we've got these really interesting edges. So by doing a single crochet, chain one, single crochet along the edge, I find that it gives a little bit more flexibility and prevents um, ruffling and adds a little more extra length if need be. So there's my single crochet and then I'll chain one. Then I'm going to find the not next spot, basically visualize it. If I were to put another stitch, it would be there, but there's the next one. So we'll basically skip that space, come to where I'd put the next stitch. And I always like to try and catch two loops there on the side, but you can do it however you like. Working and edging is as much art as it is science. So you wanna be consistent, but you also just want to work those stitches where you think they look good. So I'll chain one, sort of skip over that area, stick a stitch right in there, chain one, skip that area, stick a stitch right in here. And if you don't like the way it's going, you can definitely pull it out. If you'd prefer to work a solid single crochet border without these chain ones, you can absolutely do that. Or again, you could just leave the border off altogether or even add a decorative border. It's totally up to you. You can take this stitch pattern and do with it whatever you like. I do have some more patterns that I'd like to make with this though, because I think it is a really fun, beautiful pattern. So on our little swatch, you can see I've worked all the way along the side here. And by having those chain ones, it just gives me a little, like I say, a little bit more space and flexibility. So I'm less likely to get a ruffle or to have an edge that's a little too tight. So I'm almost down here. I've got my single crochet. I've got my chain one. Looks like this would be the next place I work and it's our corner. So I'm gonna go ahead right into the bottom of that foundation chain with a single crochet and then another chain two because we're at the corner. That helps us get around the corner of the rug there and gives a nice little edge or a nice little corner to it. And then I'll go right back in that same foundation chain for another single crochet and then just single crochet all the way across our foundation chain. And I didn't mention it at the beginning of this video, but I quite, quite often do work into the back hump of the chain, which is what I've done here. You can see this gives me a really nice two loops here at the bottom to work into. And it's just a little more consistent with the other end of the rug uh, in the finished product. So I am just single crocheting across my 14 little stitches. Of course, again, you'll probably have a lot more until we get to the end here of our foundation chain. And then basically we'll do the same thing up the other side where we're just going to single crochet, chain one and skip sort of visually where that space would be. So there we've worked into our last foundation chain. I'll chain two. And I like to work that first one along the side right back into that same space basically. Keeps that corner nice and see how it looks right there. And then we're just going to chain one and single crochet along that final edge. And that's how to crochet the striped hourglass area rug. Here you can see the finished one again and each of those stripes where I use the beautiful colors of Peyton's Inspired. And here's what it looks like again from the back. So I hope you'll give the stitch pattern a try. Don't forget your stitch markers. They're going to be really important for this one. And I hope you'll give Peyton's Inspired a try. Please go to the link in the description where you'll find both right and left-handed video tutorials, a link to the written pattern, and links to all of the supplies you need. Thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.